the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. God of might, giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name, so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good, and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. From Paul, appointed by God to be an apostle of Christ Jesus, and from our brother Timothy to the saints in Colossae, our faithful brothers in Christ, grace and peace to you from God our Father. We have never failed to remember you in our prayers and to give thanks for you to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, ever since we heard about your faith in Christ Jesus and the love that you show towards all the saints because of the hope which is stored up for you in heaven. It is only recently that you heard of this, when it was announced in the message of the truth. The good news which has reached you is spreading all over the world and producing the same results as it has among you ever since the day when you heard about God's grace and understood what this really is. Epaphras, who taught you, is one of our closest fellow workers and a faithful deputee for us as Christ's servant. And it was he who told us all about your love in the Spirit. The Word of the Lord I trust in the goodness of God forever and ever. I am like a growing olive tree in the house of God. I trust in the goodness of God forever and ever. I trust in the goodness of God forever and ever. I will thank you forevermore, for this is your doing. I will proclaim that your name is good in the presence of your friends. I trust in the goodness of God forever and ever. Alleluia! Alleluia! The word of the Lord remains forever. What is this word? It is the good news that has been brought to you. Alleluia! The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Leaving the synagogue, Jesus went to Simon's house. Now Simon's mother-in-law was suffering from a high fever, and they asked him to do something for her. Leaning over her, he rebuked the fever, and it left her. And she immediately got up and began to wait on them. At sunset, all those who had friends suffering from diseases of one kind or another brought them to him, and laying his hands on each, he cured them. Devils too came out of many people howling, You are the Son of God. But he rebuked them and would not allow them to speak because they knew that he was the Christ. When daylight came, he left the house and made his way to a lonely place. The crowds went to look for him. And when they had caught up with him, they wanted to prevent him leaving them. But he answered, I must proclaim the good news of the kingdom of God to other towns too, because that is what I was sent to do. And he continued his preaching in the synagogues of Judea. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Do we hang on or do we let go? Today we are 
faced with hanging on and letting go? And which ones seem to describe you better in this season of your life? Today in our Gospel, we have, as we heard, Jesus curing the sick, driving out demons, and people felt that with Jesus they found peace, security, safety, goodness, and hope. And they wanted to continue to have him with them, which is why when he went off to a lonely place, usually to pray and to connect with the Father, the crowds went to look for him and prevented him from leaving them, which meant that they wanted to keep him there, as if he is like the resident um, doctor or um, maybe the resident artist to make them feel good all the time. But Jesus said, I must proclaim the good news to other towns too, because that was what he was sent to do. And so we have the example earlier in the Gospel, where Simon's mother-in-law herself experienced this cure, this goodness of Christ. But what did she do? When she got cured, she immediately got up It began to wait on them. That means it began to serve others. So she was no longer just about wanting to keep this goodness for herself. You can see that service was part of this response to being cured, of having received goodness. That now she, in turn, to show her appreciation, gratitude, she wants to serve others as well. And so in this season of our Christian lives, as we follow Christ, in our encounter of our Lord, do we still want to keep on holding on to the goodness of Christ, refusing to let go and wanting the goodness for ourselves? Or after experiencing this goodness and filled to overflowing, do we ourselves then go forth like Jesus, bringing this good news to others and to also continue to allow the Spirit of God to touch others, especially those who are hurting, those who feel alone, who don't feel good enough, that it is our call, our responsibility, our love, our goodness that comes from God that wants to be transmitted to them as well. And we know Jesus is always with us, especially when we pray the words that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Let us pray. Renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, we beseech you, Lord, that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and stir us to serve you in our neighbour. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God.